Hi guys, this is Vaish from Vaish IAS and we are going to continue the history NCRT series that is of class 6th and we have reached chapter 8. So we have done in chronology the order, uh, the Indus Valley civilization, before that the Stone Age was there, after Indus Valley we see the Rig Vedic Age, then the later Vedic Age, then the Buddha and Jaina and now it's time for the Mauryan Empire where Ashoka is the most important king, not only for that empire but for entire Indian history also, okay, because you know the great term is not associated with everybody, there is the Alexander the Great, then there is Ashoka the Great and later there will be Akbar the Great. Other titles were there for other kings but uh, uh, it was not that much popular among everybody. So we will see the story of Ashoka the Great. So here they are starting with this uh, lion capital, the national emblem which uh, India has adopted. So you can see this uh, three lions, it's actually four lions, one more lion will be there which we cannot see in the image. So it said Sarnath. Another thing, last chapter we have seen a uh, Sanchi Stupa. So Sanchi Stupa and Sarnath also we have seen, but Sanchi Stupa is there. I want you to answer in comment section one question. Which new note, uh, uh, the currency note of India has this Sanchi Stupa in the back side? Okay, we know that 2000 rupee note has the Mangal Yan. Then there is a new 50 rupee note, 200 rupee note, 500 rupee note. We know there are a lot of new notes. So you have to tell me which note has this uh, Sanchi Stupa. Okay, tell me in comment section. Let others also know so that it's a new thing if people have not seen the new note. Okay, so let's continue. Ashoka was one of the greatest rulers known to history and uh, he had this inscriptions okay on pillars and rock edict it will be E D I C T rock edict which we'll see in subsequent chapters or classes. Uh, he used to communicate with people through these uh, inscriptions which will be which he'll place in even remotest places in the border of lands and all those places he used to place it. That's why it's very popular okay Ashoka's pillars. It's even there now, okay, retained now. Uh, Ashoka is actually uh, the grandson of Grand, uh, Chandragupta Maurya who founded this empire with the help of Chanakya who is also called Kautilya, also called Vishnugupta. He has lot of names and uh, his book Arthashastra, very famous, is even taught in many institutes even now uh, for his economy, for the management rules, for the uh, military uh, skills. Many things are there which is need to govern, okay, governance especially. For governance, many things are there in this Arthashastra. So, this is the order of kings, Chandragupta, Bindus, sorry, uh, Bindusara and Ashoka, okay. Very easy to remember because the alphabets are C, B, A. In reverse, it is A, B, C, Ashoka, Bindusara and Chandragupta. Only one thing, don't confuse Bindusara with Bimbisara. Bimbisara was a person we learnt in the uh, Magadha dynasty, okay, in I think two chapters before this. So, Bimbisara and Ajada Sattu, if you remember, it was there in that particular thing. So, this is Bindusara. There is a story also, uh, try to find out the name, like how the name Bindusara came. It's a very interesting story, very weird story, but it's an interesting story. Try to Google and find out how Bindusara's name became Bindusara, okay. Now, uh, the places where inscriptions of Ashoka have been found are marked with red dots, okay. In this map, it is clearly showing, it's a very interesting map, UPSC. Uh, history option students will find it very useful okay so uh, important cities we know but uh, Patliputra okay the Patna present Patna or uh, uh, Takshila or Ujjain very important centers okay Patliputra should be the serving as a capital you know in Magadha Empire also Rajgriha was there which is in present day Bihar Rajgriha Patliputra used to be the capital then uh, Vaishali used to be the capital of Baji clan so these kind of things I am repeatedly telling so that it gets registered in your mind okay now, uh, Taxila, you know it is in the Gandhara region or the westernmost region. In this map, you can see this black dot. This is Taxila, okay. So, it is like the gateway to the northwest, including Central Asia, okay. And Ujjain. Ujjain, we know it is there in the Kumbh Mela thing also. Four locations, if you learn, you will know Ujjain. And uh, uh, from north to south, it is uh, like in the center point. So, the traveling path. So, Ujjain is also famous for that. So, Ujjain, Taxila and Patliputra, three black dots you can see, very important cities. And uh, the most of the merchants, officials, craft person, they lived in these three cities, okay? Uh, because for trade and all those purposes. Now, in this, in other areas, the, there were villages of farmers and herders. In some areas, such as Central India, there were forests where people gathered forest produce. So, all kind of people were there and it's a very huge empire. That is why it's called Ashoka the Great. Now, see this in red dot, the places are the inscriptions, okay? Wherever inscriptions were found, this is a red dot. So, if you see, it is there almost everywhere, okay? Across India, it is there, south, east, west, north and also more in the uh, Ganga Basin region and even if you see Kandahar, Lampaka, it is very far away, still it is there, okay, so that much huge was Ashoka's reach. So Lumbini, Lumbini Grove, the place where Buddha was born, Meerut in UP, uh, Ujjain is here, Girnar in Gujarat, Sopara is there in Maharashtra, Sanati, Maski, Brahmagiri was there, I think uh, it was a megalithic site we learnt during our uh, first chapter, so try to recall each of the things, okay, Kalinga, which will be there in this chapter again, we will see Kalinga in Orissa, it is the old name of coastal Orissa, okay, the coastal Orissa region is called Kalinga as a whole, Sanchi is there in the center here, so I am just reading out the name so that it gets retained in your mind, okay, now let's see. 
so it's telling like uh, every people in the kingdom spoke a different language different kind of clothes different kind of food obviously the geographical span is too much so obviously people will have different different cultures okay how are empires different from kingdoms emperors need more resources than kings because empires are larger than kingdoms and that need to be protected by big armies so obviously lot more of taxes lot more of officials that is the difference between empire and kingdom now ruling an empire the area around, around patliputra was under the direct control of the emperor okay this meant that officials were appointed to collect taxes from farmers herders craftspersons traders who lived in villages so direct control of emperor is in the capital city patliputra and other places officials will be sent okay to collect taxes many of the officials were given salaries okay many of the officials were given salaries messengers went to and fro and spies kept a watch on the so if upsc bombs a statement like ashoka's kingdom had the spy system it is a true statement okay and of course the emperor supervised them all with the help of members of the royal family and senior ministers there were other areas of province other areas or provinces each of these were ruled from a provincial capital so takshila and ujjain were provincial capital sorry takshila and ujjain were uh, yeah, provincial uh, provincial capital patliputra was the central capital you can tell Although there was some amount of uh, control from Patliputra, royal princes were often sent as governors. You should know this, okay? Even after Ashoka's death and during Ashoka's time and all, he used to send his uh, children or some senior ministers to different places to spread the Dhamma or Buddhism. That we'll see in subsequent lines. So Maurya tried to control roads and rivers, which were important for transport, and to collect whatever resources were available as tax and tribute. For example, the Arthasatra tells us that the northwest was important for blankets. south india was important for gold so they are telling they traveled across and they collected resources taxes tributes and all those things what is tribute tribute is something like it's not a tax it's like uh, getting from them for uh, what to say we'll read out this which which were collected on a regular basis tribute was uh, collected as sorry collected as and when it was possible so taxes are regularly collected but tribute is not like a regular collection it was possible from people who gave a variety of things more or less willingly so willingly also they'll give or else they'll be forcefully taken also tribute whenever they occupy a kingdom or new area territory they'll get some thing from there okay that is tribute so there was also the forested regions people living in these areas were more or less independent but may have been expected to provide elephants timber honey wax to the mauryan officials so even the forest people were not spared they had to give their forest produce which they had the emperor and the capital city i think something about uh, megasthenes megasthenes was actually upsc had asked once but megasthenes was a ambassador who was into the court of chandragupta okay not ashoka chandragupta by the greek ruler uh, named seleucus nicator okay important name seleucus nicator megasthenes wrote an account about what he saw okay he actually writes uh, i think many things are there many travelers will uh, learn about uh, chinese travelers also later these people have written lot of books and uh, things about india but it sometimes it's very hard to believe because they have told very very uh, what was a very unbelievable things which is like uh, we see in movies and all right now very uh, sophisticated very much uh, uh, boasting kind of words will be there and it's very hard to believe okay so megasthenes uh, book name is actually indica you should know that actually for india itself they referred as indica and all and they, that's how that name came and uh, some things which he has mentioned uh, the occasions on which the emperor appears in public are celebrated with grand royal processions okay try to remember that uh, bahubali setup and all that kind of thing they had so he is uh, carried in a golden pallet okay his uh, guards ride elephants decorated with gold and silver some of the guards carry trees on which live live birds including a flock of trained parrots circles above the head of the emperor so they see they are telling lot of movie kind of stuff okay the king is normally surrounded by armed women okay he is afraid that someone may try to kill him he has special servants to taste the food okay so that uh, nothing like poison or something is not there he never sleeps in the same bedroom for more than two nights so these kind of exaggerated lot of stories are there so don't know how much true what is true what is fact he fiction okay so about city also he has written okay large beautiful city surrounded by massive wall 578 towers 64 gates um two story building built of wood mud brick king palace is also of wood decorated with stone carvings surrounded with gardens enclosing or keeping birds so too much uh, what to say a lavish kind of setup they have been describing megasthenes who was a governor from seleucus nicator about the entire mauryan empire okay ashoka the most famous mauryan ruler was ashoka he was the first ruler who tried to take his message to the people through inscriptions like i told most of the ashoka inscription were in prakrit you know prakrit as by now i think you will be sure now prakrit is the language of the masses and sanskrit is for the brahmins and the script is brahmi script 
Ashoka's war in Kalinga. Kalinga is the ancient name of Hydro coastal Orissa. Ashoka fought a war to conquer Kalinga, but after that, this violence, bloodshed, everything he saw, and he told like no more wars. And that's also a UPC statement like he was the only king who uh, gave up the conquest after winning a war. Okay, in uh, not UPC statement, in some mock test it was there. Now, describing the Kalinga war, uh, not very important. He's again telling this lack and how people died, a lot of blood here and there. And finally, he decided like uh, to observe Dhamma. Dhamma is actually the uh, Prakrit version of the Sanskrit word Dharma, if you see here. Okay. So, he is telling a uh, winning people over through Dhamma. That is not through war or force. It should be through uh, this kind of messages, okay, of peace and Dharma. So, what was Ashoka's Dhamma? Ashoka's Dhamma did not involve worship of a god, okay. No god or sacrifice, okay. That statement UPC will do, pick up. He felt uh, that just as a father tries to teach his children, he had a duty to instruct his subjects, okay. So, he had a, he wanted to establish a close contact or a, uh, good contact with his subjects. He was also inspired by the teachings of Buddha. So some things about Ashoka and Dhamma. And this bull structure, you can see the Rampurva bull. This is important because now it is present in the Rashtrapati Bhavan, okay, President's uh, place, President's uh, residence. So you should know uh, this was part of the Mauryan pillar found in Rampurva, Bihar. Okay, this Rampurva bull found in Bihar, Maurya, part of Mauryan pillar, and now it is there in the Rashtrapati Bhavan, okay. So these are all will be part of art and culture also as and when you learn history ancient medieval modern uh, you will be parallelly covering art and culture also okay other dance forms music forms are there with that we will do in a separate video okay there were a number of problems like uh, many religions were there animals were being sacrificed uh, then uh, quarrels in family slaves these are generic things so many problems are there so he appointed officials okay known as dhamma mahamatta okay dhamma mahamatta were officials for spreading the teachings of Dhamma. Now, Ashoka got his message inscribed on rocks and pillars, instructing his officials to read his message to those who could not read themselves, okay. So even if people cannot read it, even someone will read it out, okay, that much we are done. And uh, it was spread to Syria, Egypt, Greece, Sri Lanka. So it is like almost everywhere, every part of the world, West, East, North, North, South and all. He even arranged for medical treatment for both human beings and animals. So overall, total Ahimsa you can tell. Now Ashoka's message to his subjects, uh, not very important, lot of uh, Buddhist philosophy only he will be keeping on reading like help others, respect others and all those things. So I am not reading it out. Uh, Jawaharlal Nehru actually he quoted something, his edicts still speak to us in the language we can understand and we can still learn much from them. Okay, So he is telling very good things, so Jawaharlal Nehru is telling we, we should, uh, what to say, take uh, things, uh, fruitful things from this thing okay like uh, this thing it is a uh, both i think one statement will be there uh, it's not here like if you are uh, disrespecting some other person's religion then it's like uh, doing back to your own religion something like that he, he had told uh, brahmi script okay this is actually now in the a alphabet a or the letter r is actually written in different language early brahmi uh, devanagari bengali uh, malayalam and uh, tamil so just shown the difference of how different things were there elsewhere at the same time what was happening when the Mauryan Empire was happening at China, this great wall was being built, okay, 2400 years ago, China building this great thing which says, I think uh, they are telling the only thing which can be seen from the moon, only structure on earth, man-made structure, okay, so again uh, protecting their empire, so their own story, we don't need that story and all, but we should know that uh, great wall of China was built during this time, around the time of Ashoka, um, questions? Fill in the blanks, we have officials collected dash from the area under the direct control. I think we will see the two or false alone. Ujjain was the gateway to the northwest. Obviously not, it was a taxi la. Ujjain was somewhere in the north-south uh, direction. Uh, Chandragupta's ideas were written down in the Akashatra. It's not Chandragupta's idea, it's just Chanakya's idea. So both are false. Kalinga was the ancient name of it's uh, Orisa actually, so this also is false. Most uh, Ashokan inscriptions are in the Brahmi script. This is true. So only one statement is true. A, C, D, E, I don't know why B is missed, okay, typo even in NCRTs. Okay, so I'll come up with the next chapter soon. Till then, enjoy learning. Thank you and have a nice day.